Hey guys, it's um, not quite 5 a.m. and I'm awake, which is not normal for me. Oh man, the car light just went out. Hold on. Uh, ah, oh my god. So, yeah, this is what I look like at 5 in the morning. Mm, not a great look. Uh, but I'm doing it for science. Okay, well, I think we're here. Um, the sun is almost out. It's very foggy. I've already learned one thing, which is that it doesn't matter what time you leave, how early you get up, uh, and if you're just going to the beach in the fog, there will still be traffic because San Francisco, but we made it. This past weekend, the nice folks at the California Academy of Sciences invited me to join their Snapshot Cal Coast initiative, in which they asked the people of California to get out to the beach and take all the photos of all the things. It just so happens that the opening BioBlitz, as they call them, was at my favorite beach in beautiful Half Moon Bay. So I absolutely had to go no matter how early I had to get up to catch that historic low tide when we could find tons of marine life in the tidal pools. We used the iNaturalist app, which is basically Instagram for people who love science. It's free and it's super easy to use. If you see a plant or an animal that you think is cool or weird or pretty or interesting, you take a photo of it and upload it. It'll automatically tag the location and you can type in whatever species or class or kingdom you think it might be, and then you post it and other people can view it and help you narrow down your identification until you have the species. I got to speak with one Cal Academy scientist about why that data that we were collecting on iNaturalist was so important. So my name is Rebecca Johnson and I work at the California Academy of Sciences where I co-run Citizen Science. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Hi, Bren. <laughs> so we do a couple different things. So because we use the iNaturalist platform, um, those data, once a community, there's, it's a social network and a community, so once a community agrees on an identification, those data are sent to what's called GBIF, or the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, which is where biodiversity data from natural history museums um, is shared. And so for scientists and folks interested in conservation who are want to know where things have been seen, where species have been found, like species occurrence data, historic or <laughs> historic, <laughs> historic or recent, um, they, that's a good that's a place to start and so anybody can use those data because all these data are open and freely available so there that is one kind of more passive way that they can be used but we're really interested in our work in how species ranges are changing along the California coast and we do a lot of like I said before we do a lot of work here and so um, we've seen um, some things moving north um, with warming waters especially last year when we had the warm water blob off our coast and Combined with the El Nino, we saw species ring, things that are more southerly here. But to really understand how the ranges are changing, we need people everywhere, um, all, at least all along the California coast, if not the whole, the whole west coast. And so um, it's only by working together that we can do that. And so our scientific question, our questions are about what's changing and what species ranges are changing. And also just to collect um, and gather <coughs> Um, baseline data, so when things change that we don't know, that are not changing yet, <coughs> we um, can see that. My dog and I had a blast creeping around the tide pools, and you will too. If you live near the California coast, check out the Cal Academy website for info on events happening near you. Or if you're more of a loner or you're not nearby any events or even not in California at all, that's okay. Just head outside with your phone and the app and start documenting. It's a lot of fun, and you end up with a catalog of all the cool stuff you saw. And as a bonus, you're helping scientists. If you're heading to tide pools, I recommend donning some waterproof boots or at least packing a spare pair of socks and shoes and maybe even getting a waterproof case for your phone, which you can find for surprisingly cheap online. I somehow managed to get through the day without dropping my phone in a tide pool, but I plan to do a lot more of these and I'm pretty realistic about my own clumsiness. Thanks once again to Cal Academy for inviting me along to an event that combines all my favorite things, the great outdoors, science, and nerd fellowship.